Mahara prison inmates were not killed by gunshots, says State Minister Lohan. Opposition questions how shots were fired without damaging the weapon storage. Burevi leaves the island and heads towards South India. Indigenous community in Pollebadda protests against forest destruction in the southern border of the Rambakan Noya. O-level examination likely in March of 2021, says Education Minister. Hello there, very good Thursday evening to all our viewers. You're watching Prime Time News. We're coming to you live and direct this evening from our news first studios in Colombo. You're joining with me, Joel Outskun, and our interpreter, Tarika Gabriel, via Zoom. We have a comprehensive report of stories for you. Let's take a look at our top story for today. Now, the recent unrest at the Mahara prison was subject to debate in Parliament today. Mahara Bandanagarya Tula Atu Siddhi Randavian Ekolostenik Marneta Patvi. Eleven prison inmates were killed in the recent Mahara prison unrest, while 106 inmates have sustained injuries. Two investigative committees have been appointed to look into this matter. Based on the decisions and recommendations provided by these committees, we will proceed forward. We have learned that 120 inmates were transferred from the Valikada prison to the Mahara prison in violation of COVID-19 regulations, leading to the formation of a cluster with 183 cases. The deputy director overlooking health-related matters of prisons is a member of the Vyatmaga movement. He had ordered the transfer of these inmates. We are not trying to politicize the situation, but that is the truth. This is why the cluster was formed, ultimately leading to the unrest. There is no room to commit a wave of murders in the country. The opposition leader is trying to sling mud at the Vyatmaga movement. The government is investigating this matter. I once served time in prison. There were 51 inmates in my cell. When I was remanded, there were 25 inmates in a cell. We couldn't sleep properly as well. We know the situation at prisons. The previous government never established or improved the facilities at prisons. The former government never cared about the well-being of prisoners or the situation at prisons. They only established new courts to fill prisons. Do not try to score points by making such claims. Were 120 prison inmates transferred to the Mahara prison upon the instructions of the deputy director overlooking health-related matters? The doctor in charge at the Mahara prison opposed the move, citing that it violated COVID-19 protocols. But what happened? The assistant director had reprimanded him and the 120 inmates were transferred forcefully. These were the matters that I brought up. Vimal Viravansa and his group says that those responsible for the unrest had the urge to see blood, but the blood they wanted to see was not on themselves. Those who had opened fire are the ones who wanted to see blood. In my view, we need to rethink prison management. Health services and medical benefits of the same standard must be provided to everyone, including those at prisons. This must be achieved through the proper coordination between all factions, including the Defence Ministry, the Police, the Ministry of Prisons and the Ministry of Justice. No one has the right to murder an unarmed prison inmate. However, we had to experience such an unfortunate incident. We faced a similar situation eight years ago. We need to rehabilitate inmates who are addicted to drugs. Holding them in prison is not the solution. A video of the incident was released to the media. 
The visuals showed a brawl taking place between two groups of inmates. Everyone admits that officers fired gunshots in the prison, but the visuals do not show the shooting. How did that go missing from the footage? The authorities can investigate the incident, but the incident had begun after some inmates were admitted to the prison without being subjected to PCR tests. That is why the prisoners had discussed their concerns with prison officers between 4.30 and 5.00 p.m. that day. Tensions had arisen after the talks proved to be futile. Therefore, we cannot allow the rights of these prisoners to be deprived by spreading false information claiming that they had attempted to escape the prison by breaking the main gate or by jumping over the wall. Boru Mahadhyay Prachara Dala Eira Karuvangi Jeevatthi Maithiya Uduraha Gan Nidhi Dinda Bhai Meke Bandana Ga None of the inmates had died due to gunfire that was opened at them. All deaths had taken place due to the scuffles that broke out between inmates. No one had died due to gunshots fired by officers. They had been revealed through the post-mortem examination. Marana Parikshan Avaling Evan Eliyala Diyanwa Me Palamini Siddhi Eriwe Mahabek This is not the first incident of this nature. Two individuals were killed in Anuradhapura. 11 inmates were killed at the Mahara prison. Is this national security? They said that the inmates had consumed a pill known as reverse. Medicines are given to control a person's behaviour. However, the government is claiming that the drug had induced violent behaviour. This incident was planned at the Valigata prison before the 18th of November. An associate of underworld criminal Samyang by the name of Chaturanga was imprisoned at Valigata. They conducted a trial run before the unrest. Intelligence units have confirmed these incidents. The telephone numbers used by these individuals had been identified. Accordingly, the inmate named Chaturanga, another prisoner and a jailer who abetted the incident were transferred to various locations. That is when they conducted a trial run by providing two tablets daily to the inmates. Those who consumed the pill had injured themselves. There is evidence to substantiate that. Will inmates kill each other under ordinary circumstances? An inmate in the cell opposite to the one in which I was imprisoned had consumed the drug and acted frantically for about one and a half days. These inmates had consumed tablets that are used for mental disorders. We must inquire into what happened to the tablets at the prison dispensary that was supposed to be given for mental ailments. That doctor has close ties to the Janata Abhimukti Paramuna. When we made inquiries, we learned that the inmates had not damaged the prison armory. If that was the case, how did the inmates get hold of weapons? When visuals of the unrest were aired on TV, we could hear gunshots in the distance. They were not fired into the air, therefore this problem must be resolved immediately. Meanwhile, the relatives of inmates at the Mahara prison gathered opposite the prison premises today. They urged the authorities to provide them with information about their loved ones who are currently held in prison. The relatives of the inmates were accompanied inside the prison premises by prison authorities to identify the deceased. I would like to inform the relatives of the prison inmates that your loved ones are safe inside the prison. All inmates will be provided with facilities to contact their family members. The identity of the deceased individuals have been identified and communicated to the relevant factions. All of this is taking place under the supervision of the Mahara prison superintendent. A committee has been appointed to estimate and quantify the damages caused. Doctors claim that those responsible for the unrest had consumed some form of drugs. Investigations are currently underway to look into this matter. The inmates at the Mahara prison who had escaped while receiving treatment at the Ragama hospital after sustaining injuries in the recent unrest were arrested in Urugodavata this morning. The National Psychiatrist's body has rejected claims that drugs for mental ailments can provoke violent behaviour after it had been cited as a cause for the unrest at the Mahara prison on Monday. The Sri Lankan College of Psychiatrists said in a statement, quote, We would like to state that this publicity is most unfortunate and without any rational basis. End quote. The College of Psychiatrists insisted that none of these drugs are responsible for violent or aggressive behavior and in fact many of these drugs promote calmness. It also notes that individuals of mental disorders are more often victims of violence than perpetrators. <laughs> What is the definition of a prisoner? A court sentences a wrongdoer to prison under the guarantee that the government will protect him. 
However, that is not a guarantee in Sri Lanka. This government has never provided that assurance. The government that pledged to make prisons clean institutions now say that the inmates acted violently after consuming 21,000 narcotic tablets. Concerns will be raised by countries at the Geneva Convention regarding this incident. This cannot be concealed. <laughs> Yesterday, a video of a brawl between two groups was released to the public. However, the footage had been muted. We have received visuals that contain audio. This is what had taken place. The people who recorded this video seemed to be enjoying the brawl that was taking place. They could have used minimal force and prevented this incident from taking place instead of allowing the situation to aggravate. Given that they seem to be delighted at the sight of the scuffle, we are suspicious whether this incident was orchestrated deliberately. <laughs> Inmates were involved in a fight after either consuming drugs or due to some other reason. But instead of recording the entire scene on camera, they should have tried to bring the situation under control. If they had taken the appropriate action, the unrest would not have aggravated. It is pathetic to listen to the language used by prison officers who were recording the incident. <laughs> It is not just the government that is being shamed in the face of the international community, but the entire country. If our country is notorious for opening gunfire at prisoners for requesting PCR tests and harshly treating prisoners, the international community will get a bad impression of the government's conduct towards the ordinary people. They are attempting to cremate the bodies of some prisoners who died in the unrest, citing they had contracted COVID-19. We are suspicious whether they are attempting to cremate the bodies to cover up the true facts of the incident. We have also been told that the logbook at the Mahara prison has gone missing. How can incidents of this nature take place? The number of COVID-19 infections is spreading rapidly in prisons. More attention must be paid to formulating practical solutions to prevent overcrowding in prisons and to ensure the welfare of prisoners. There is a saying that prisoners are human beings. Therefore, the relevant stakeholders must provide them with the required facilities. It is pathetic to see inmates being shot and killed in prisons. These incidents must not take place. As mentioned on the headline, Sri Lanka's Archbishop of Colombo has said alternative solutions should be sought if investigations are not taking place effectively into last year's terrorist attacks. We are still doubtful if proper investigations are carried out into those who sponsored and funded the attacks. Unfortunately, we don't see any progress. We ask the government not to neglect the investigations due to the daily challenges it faces. The government and the president made a promise that the investigations will be carried out properly without just commissions and state entities looking into this matter. If this is not done, we will have to resort to alternative measures and vest another group with this responsibility. <laughs> The Archbishop made these remarks when Parliamentarian Kavin the Jaiwardhana paid him a visit today. The cyclonic storm Burevi is gradually moving away from the island towards the South Indian coast. Now, prior warnings were issued for the hurricane continuously while a disaster management mechanism was set in place. However, several areas in the northern province suffered severe damages due to the strong and gusty winds and heavy rainfall that was experienced due to the cyclone. The Burevi cyclone made landfall in Sri Lanka's eastern coast last evening, bringing down heavy downpours in the north, north central and eastern provinces. By 8.30 a.m. today, the Alampil area in the Mulaitivu district had received the highest rainfall in the country. The Department of Meteorology has cautioned that rough seas can be experienced around the country due to the impact of the cyclone. Accordingly, fishermen have been strictly warned against going out to sea. Due to the storm, a surge of about one meter height above the astronomical tide is likely to inundate low-lying coastal areas extending from Poonari to Putlam.
District Secretary of Jaffna, G. Maheshan, said more than 2,100 individuals belonging to 650 families had been affected due to the inclement weather. He added that a program is currently underway to provide relief to those affected. 30 houses had been damaged completely, while 200 houses were partially damaged. Several areas in the Jaffna district have experienced heavy rainfall since last morning, while many areas in Jaffna continue to be inundated. This is the situation in Tenmarachi, Jaffna. Our correspondent said power supply to several areas in Tenmarachi has been disrupted. According to our correspondent, 15 houses in Velane, Jaffna were destroyed due to strong winds and another 155 houses were damaged. 60 houses in the Achuveli area in Jaffna were inundated due to heavy rainfall. The sluice gates of the Tundamannaru Baba were also opened to control the floods. Fishermen in Pesale, Mana refrained from going out to sea due to the prevailing weather. A group of officials, including the Mana district secretary, visited low-lying areas that have been inundated following heavy downpours. Our correspondent reported that water levels of the Iranamadu tank in Kilinochi reached spill levels due to heavy rain. Paddy fields were inundated after the spill gates of the Kudumuruthi tank in Punarin were opened to control the rising water. While many low-lying areas in Kilinochi were inundated by floods, trees and branches were strewn across the Jayantipuram area. Several vessels and fishing gear in the coast of Kilinochi were damaged due to the turbulent weather yesterday. A lorry had crashed on a tree that had fallen onto the A9 road in Vaunia after Cyclone Burevi made landfall. The injured driver was admitted to the Vaunia base hospital. Waves had reached the land in the coastal areas of Kenya in the Trinkamali district, leaving low-lying areas inundated. Trees had fallen due to heavy winds that had blown across the area yesterday. All Ceylon Makkal Congress parliamentarian Selvara Sagajendran requested for a vote as the debate on the expenditure head of the Defence Ministry under the 2021 budget ended today. Accordingly, the expenditure head was passed with 132 votes in favour and 5 votes against. Field Marshal Sarath Fonseca expressed these views when he opened the debate in Parliament today. I am of the stance that the tri forces must be strengthened. Our army is equipped with tanks that were used in 1955 during the Second World War. The Air Force does not have combat aircraft. There were about 11 combat aircrafts during the war. Four of them were purchased at twice the price as money was swindled by Udyanga Viratunga and his gang. Now there is only one aircraft. The Navy has two Coast Guard boats, although we have an admiral of the fleet. The intelligence sector has not been restructured apart from transferring a few heads of intelligence units. Provide intelligent officers with professional training to uplift their sector so that they can be on par with other intelligence units across the world. A short-term plan to reform intelligence units will take about five years, while a long-term plan will take more than a decade to be fully implemented. Injured soldiers have constantly sought a solution for their pension-related problems. We saw leaders of the government feeding them king coconut water when they protested in the past. I understand that there is a problem and it must be solved without politicizing it. Police officers also have their problems. The son of the law and order minister is also in the police. Therefore, please draw special attention to this problem. When I was a cadet sergeant at Ananda College, the minister was a corporal. I am happy to see that he has progressed and reached a high position in his career. He has spoken about disciplining the police. That process can begin from home. We saw that your son saluted and hugged him. You drew heavy emphasis on eradicating underworld activities from the country. However, nothing has been done to that effect. Disciplining the police and eradicating the underworld are two different topics. Take the relevant measures to carry out these activities. We will support you in those endeavors. You don't have any knowledge about the military. You are aware only of the batik industry. You are not aware of the operations of the police as well. 
I am still unable to obtain a visa to visit my children overseas. The army commander and 51 senior military officials are facing those restrictions. We must resolve these problems, otherwise it will bring disrepute to the country. A certain minister is not in the house today. He always criticizes the housing projects of the previous government and does not reveal his plans. We wish to ask him to fulfill his responsibilities. There is a former minister from Badullah in the government who always brings up matters regarding the past to sling mud at the opposition leader. If we talk about his background and history, he will be ashamed to enter the parliamentary chamber. Therefore, I wish to remind such individuals to avoid tarnishing the image of parliamentarians. During the war, some military officers avoided going to the battlefield citing minor injuries. They came to Colombo, obtaining degrees and went on to tie the knot under the military uniform. There is a person with this background in the government. I once responded to him over accusations that I had committed abuse as an army commander. After listening to my response, he had accused me of being an army commander who is shy to speak. I have learned that this parliamentarian had left the army after sustaining minor injuries. He has sent a letter to the president seeking a declaration that his resignation from the army was based on medical advice. The motive of this is to obtain the allowance of retired soldiers. The person attempting to obtain the payments offered to injured soldiers by unscrupulous means as a parliamentarian is attempting to teach me how to act as an army commander. This person was not in the army when I was a commander, otherwise he would have known about me. I wish to tell this person to inquire about Sarat Fonseca from those in service, including the incumbent army commander. In more news this evening, on the 29th of November, News First reported on the attempts to clear a massive expanse of land in a water catchment area located on the borders of the Rubbercan Oya in Ampara. Now, a tense situation arose today as a group, including members of the indigenous community, raised objections against these activities. <laughs> on the 18th of last month, the Director General of the Mahavali Authority permitted to clear about 500 acres of land for a proposed agriculture and livestock development project. Accordingly, a private company had commenced the process of clearing the land under the conditions set out by the Central Environmental Authority and the Forest Conservation Department. An electric fence is also being constructed around the land area demarcated for the project. However, the private company involved in the exercise has temporarily halted operations given the objections that were raised against their activities. <laughs> Another 728 COVID-19 patients were discharged today following recovery, taking the total number of recoveries in the country to 19,032. Now, the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the country stands at 25,760. According to the Epidemiology Unit, Sri Lanka recorded its highest single-day spike in COVID-19 cases yesterday, which is 878 cases confirmed. The Ministry of Health said 6,604 active COVID-19 patients continue to receive treatment. The COVID-19 death toll in the country stands at 124. Education Minister Professor G. L. Pirish said that the GCE ordinary level examination, which has been postponed on multiple occasions, will most likely be held in March next year.
අපි බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා මාර්තු මාසය තුල සාමාන්‍ය පෙළ විභාගයේ පැවැති වෙන පුළුවන් වෙයි කියලා. We believe that the GCE ordinary level examination could be held in March next year while results would most likely be released in June. Advanced level tuition classes generally commence in September. If results are released in June rather than in September, advanced level tuition can commence in July. The Ministry of Education has initiated a program to facilitate this process where 10000 rupees will be issued to each examination center where paper marking will be carried out to purchase health protective gear further the allowance for paper marking will be increased and sanitizer will be provided for those engaged in marking papers we are also in the process of preparing for other exams held by the examinations department මේ අතර විභාග දෙපාර්තමේන්තුවේ අනික් විභාග පැවැත් වීමට අපි වැඩ කටයුතු සලසමින් සිටිනවා You're watching Prime Time News. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay tuned. Do your online shopping now with Sambole.lk to get it home delivered or pick up on your way. Sambole.lk. Welcome back. First Sri Lankan born member of the New Zealand Parliament, Vanushi Walters made her maiden speech to Parliament yesterday. In her speech she made brief statements in Sinhalese and Tamil including a reminder that human rights belong to all. Ayubuan vanakam there's a moment just as you wake it doesn't happen every morning but on those mornings when something significant has changed in your life there's an inch of time after waking where you take a breath before the cloak of your new identity washes back. It was there the morning after election with warp speed like force and left me awash with gratitude for the trust placed in me as the first Labour Party member to hold the upper harbour seat. I I can't claim the privilege of being the first MP of Sri Lankan descent. However, I am the first Sri Lankan born member of New Zealand's parliament and I'm incredibly humbled to be joining a values based not to mention enormous labor caucus Manida Oremehel ane vrukkum sundamanadu manava hemikam sialantama aiti which means in both Tamil and then Sinhala human rights belong to all I look around at the diversity in this parliament which will serve us so well this term but oh as well as our beautiful differences we share so many remarkable similarities in human experience Six new Labour MPs including Vanushi Walters delivered their maiden speeches in parliament yesterday The central bank failed to sell 14% of fresh rebills offered at its weekly auction with 34.3 billion rupees out of 40 billion rupees of bills offered being sold. The central bank in its weekly bill auction yesterday sold 85.8% of the total treasury bills offered. Bids amounting to 62.3 billion rupees were received for an offering of 40 billion rupees. The Parliamentary Council which met today has ratified the nominations made by President Gotabe Rajapaksa to five commissions. These commissions are the Finance Commission, Public Service Commission, Police Commission, Commission to investigate allegations of bribery and corruption and the National Election Commission. Further Nimal Punjihewa will be the new chairman of the National Elections Commission replacing Mahinda Deshapriya. Well today marks International Day of Persons with Disabilities and this year it is marked under the theme Building Back Better toward a disability inclusive accessible and sustainable post COVID-19 world. The observance of International Day of Persons with Disabilities aims to promote an understanding of disability issues and mobilize support for the dignity, rights and well-being of persons with disabilities. UN Chief Antonio Guterres called for greater inclusion of persons with disabilities in society. Even under normal circumstances, the 1 billion persons with disabilities worldwide are less likely to enjoy access to education, health care and livelihoods or to participate and be included in the community in all its dimensions. They are more likely to live in poverty and experience higher, experience higher rates of violence, neglect and abuse. 
We must also ensure that the vision and aspirations of persons with disabilities are included and accounted for in a disability-inclusive, accessible and sustainable post-COVID world, post-COVID-19 world. Sri Lanka became a signatory to the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities in 2007 and ratified it in 2016, although the local enabling legislation is yet to be enacted. We have a very charity-oriented, welfare-oriented view of disability, uh, persons with disabilities, we would, uh, through a charitable lens. And as you said, a lot of the um, reasoning behind that is through karmic discourse, that persons with disabilities have done something bad in their past lives, and hence this is the natural justice or the karmic justice that they need to then play out in their lives. When we have an approach like that, there is no incentive for us to even think about inclusion or social justice because, you know, as far as we are concerned, this is natural justice. It's not someone's personal tragedy. It's not some kind of pathology that we need to take you to a doctor to fix. It is a social issue. So that mindset in itself has to change from some kind of individualized issue to uh, a social issue, right? Uh, an issue of barriers. In 2016, UNICEF Sri Lanka commissioned the Learning Disabilities in Sri Lanka report and it found that 23.5% of children aged between 5 to 14 with disabilities are excluded from mainstream education. 55.4% of the disabled aged between 15 and 19 and 86% of the disabled aged between 20 to 24 are not engaged in any educational activity or vocational training. Majority of the children with disabilities are left out of education. Um, we, we are very proud of our universal primary education and our high literacy levels. But access to edu education is again, it's a complex issue. And in an education system like ours, where we are target driven, for example, the grade 5 scholarship, it is very difficult to fit in a student with disability and provide that student the accommodations that is required, probably an assistant teacher, probably explanations in simple language. So it's things like that, it, it is very difficult to fit into this system of education. A. And then the next problem is that access. Are our schools accessible? Can a student using a wheelchair access a school? And then, are, is society receptive? Do the principals enroll students with disabilities into schools? Are the teachers prepared? Are other parents prepared to have a student with a disability in the classroom? Because there are complaints. They say that there uh, so I may use this word quote unquote, normal child will um, adapt the behaviors of the disabled child. The greatest disability is our inability to accept and respect differences. The prestigious Bank Award for Sri Lanka's Best Bank of 2020 has been awarded to the National Development Bank. News first spoke to Group CEO of NDB, Dimantha Seniviratna. The awards are the industry's most widely used index of global banking and are internationally recognized as a definitive guide to the soundness, strength and profitability of banks. This is the second time NDB has won this award. It's a very uh, significant achievement for NDB. Uh, award is like the Oscars in the banking world and the Banker magazine been published in this since 1926. The Banker magazine is part of the Financial Times group. So that's the most sought after award uh, globally. So it's a big privilege for NDB to win this for the second time. The Banker magazine notes Sri Lanka's crowded banking sector means each institution is pushed to be more innovative and respond to changing customer needs 
to keep hold of the business and NDB has demonstrated how it has modernized its services. Well, if you look at the NDB's uh, progress over the last three, four years, we have been growing at much higher than the market rates. Our average cumulative average growth rate was about 25% when the market growth rate was around 15%. So always above average. So now we are the fourth largest listed bank in the country. So uh, awards like this will naturally strengthen the bank's proposition, the perception among the uh, mindset of uh, the customers, so that that will help us to look in bigger opportunities, expansion opportunities. Uh, all that are basically supported by awards of this nature. Well, on that note, we wrap this edition of Primetime News. Thank you very much for stopping by. More news follows on our website. That is www.newspress.lk. Take care, good night and stay safe. You can now watch News First bulletins live on YouTube. That's not all. The developments of news stories can be found on our YouTube channel as well. All you need to do is click on the subscribe button down below. Stay tuned to News First. News First.